I grew up in the uh, country, if you call it down country. It was down was country back then. It was like country town. Tarkula in the desert, Warrnambool, Wheaton Sheep, Murray Bridge and Tail and Bend on our mightiest river. So to me, the bush is really what gives Australia its identity, or so I like to think. Even if a generation of Australians now are more likely to spend their holidays overseas. And I reckon that ignorance of the country now can lead city politicians to take it a bit for granted and then get whacked in the face when they do, like with the this protest today of farmers furious at having massive transmission lines marching over their land. But right now, my company, News Corp, is holding its annual Bush Summit that's moving between six states at the moment with speakers, including the Prime Minister, the Opposition Leader, you heard Gina Reinhart, many others. Uh, this is our chance, I think, to figure out what's going on in the bush. Uh, the news of the big city media too often ignores. And joining me is prize-winning Daily Telegraph cartoonist Warren Brown, who toured Australia to report for the Bush Summit. He was covering the Flying Doctor Service, for instance, covering everything from small outback towns to small industrial centres like Port Pirie, far from the big cities. And this is the man who can tell us, I think, the mood of the bush, because he's reporting to us from his corner of the bush outside Goulburn. Warren Brown, what have you found in your in your peregrinations and going to some of the uh, summit? Well, uh, Andrew, thank you for having me. Look, the Bush Summit, this is now in its fifth year and it's been a delight to see it. You know, now it's now emerging as a nat national project and I was fortunate enough to travel, well, from Port P from Adelaide, really, Port Pirie, Broken Hill, Silverton, all the way down to Vic into Victoria and then up through the middle of New South Wales into Queensland. So my role really was to try and take the temperature of what people in the country you know, what, what, you know, how they're coping, what they're thinking, and, and to sort of to sit down with them and, and get them to, to sort of relate to me the sorts of things that they wouldn't normally tell people. And, I, and that's what I love about living in the bush. As you know, Andrew, it takes a while. People in the bush, they're big thinkers and they have strong opinions, but they, they'll only give those opinions out once they're, they're satisfied that you're, you know, you're on board with them and you're listening to them. And that's what the whole Bush Summit thing's about. It's about listening. It's not about some city journo coming in and, t you know, pontificating as to what they should do. We're listening as to what they say. Well, look, you know, the city media, and look, uh, I'm city media, even if I don't live in the city now, um, full of stuff about the voice and global warming policies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how are these issues actually biting in the bush? Well, that's really interesting, Andrew, because... You know, um, you're not going to say, you know, I, I roll up and say, I'll explain to them what the Bush Summit is about. We're here to listen. And, you know, they're a bit guarded. So, you know, someone will say, all right, and they'll tell you what they think you want to hear. And then when they discover that that you're listening to them, they'll when the, the interview's over, they'll say, now, I'll, now I'm going to tell you what I really think. And they'll tell you things about the voices, probably the big issue for 2023. And the thing is, it's kind of, it's just parachuted in from nowhere. As far as they're concerned, and you know, and the the problem for for the people for anyone who's deciding to to vote no is that there's this kind of surreptitious sort of feeling that you're you know you're being painted as a racist, and and the people I spoke with, I didn't find anybody racist at all, but their concerns were real. They were about the constitution. Why are we tampering with the constitution? Why? We, what are the outcomes going to be? For example, at a Parachilna, you were talking about Tarkula, so out that way in South Australia. I was talking to a lady who was a uh, a white um, tour guide, you know, right out in the Flinders Ranges, and and she, you know, has a hell of a lot to do with Aboriginal communities out there, and she's concerned. You know, there are lots of Indigenous people out there who have not, have not made their minds up, and she's concerned. And you know, she's saying to me, "Well, you know, what? Does, I don't understand it." She's a very learned person, and she's saying, "Where, where is this going to go? What's going to come of this? These things have not been discussed." And I think that's what's, you know, that's 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 the overall feeling that I got from it, that, you know, this is not being explained to people very well. And, you know, their, their opinions their opinions are now, I mean, it's coming to crunch time when the referendum hits, you know, what how are they going to vote? And I'm pretty sure I know how they're going to vote. I think that's uh, backed up by polls, I think, that the rural yeah, voters yeah. are more likely to yeah. know. And I think that comes out of valuing a sense of community that a lot of people yeah. in the more atomised cities do not do not have. They don't want uh, division by race. I mean, why would they? No. That goes against what their lived experience is of Australia. But, but well, what it's... You've been coming... You know, you've gone to a session, uh, the Tamworth thing. Um, you've yes. kept an eye on what's coming out of the other summits around the country. Yes. Or, or the summit meetings. What's come out that's most struck you? 
Oh, look, it's a few things. I mean, the voice was certainly a big one for me, and I, and I, I'm coming back to that. I don't mean to, but necessarily. But one of the, the first people I interviewed in Port Pirie, you know, multi generational Italian family. You know, they've been there as fish, you know, as sort of seafood providors. I asked them about the voice. They kind of recoiled because it's like it's a bit of a sore point with people in the bush. I, I found that most fascinating. The other thing, seeing those farmers today driving the tractors around about transmission, transmission towers, the thing that seems to have popped up out of nowhere is this this you know um, revolt against uh, you know wind turbines and uh, solar farms and all mm. these things that are destroying the bush. You know, I went to Silverton where you know they filled Mad Max. There's the great old Silverton pub. To my absolute shock, here's this famous outback pub, and on the horizon, you know, wind farms. As far as you can see, no. I could not believe it. Yeah, yeah, north of north no. of Broken, where they're having the Monday Monday Festival uh, about now. But I could not believe it, Andrew. And this is one of the things. This, you know, the vandalism, it's this sort of vandalism of the bush. Yeah. Yeah, mate. The, you know, the, the the Labor Party keeps saying. To the Liberals, oh, you want a nuclear power station? Tell us where you're going no. to put them. They don't realise that the Bush is finding out where the Labor Party is going to be putting these stonking great transmission lines like Triffids over the landscape, oh. and they don't <laughs> yeah. like it. Big surprise. That's... Warren but, Brown, but thank you so much indeed for your time, mate. Love talking to you. Thank you.